The NIMBY mobilizations were mostly associated with fighting projects that were believed to cause social and environmental harm. Whether it was a gas pipeline, a toxic dump, a garbage incinerator, or a housing development, or a highway. However, it would be a mistake to consider all their manifestations to be for the social good. The term NIMBY becomes more contradictory and politically perplexing at this juncture. Depending on its actors, its intentions can be conservative, racist, exclusionary, and elitist. Or it can strive for social equity, environmental justice, economic solidarity, and public inclusivity. Not in my backyard commonly has opposing meanings, and it is precisely this contradictory character what has made it into an effective political tool that neutralizes any opposition or resistance to urban development. This by turning it into a derogatory syndrome that attacks progress. This trend has made NIMBYs widely unpopular and seen the term become a pejorative and an insult that symbolizes backwardness. There is no denying that the notion of NIMBYism has had a profound influence on urban planning and development, where its immediate use today is labeled as an obstacle to housing affordability and has thus enabled politicians, policymakers, and developers to easily dismiss neighborhood level pro-social justice democratic dissent that opposes their crony development policies and of course blame them for the housing crisis. And since today's media landscape falls easily for scapegoating and simplistic arguments, this negative categorization of NIMBYs has become status quo. Just for the fun of it, let me illustrate this with a series of recent news headlines. Take this one from the Times, Britain's oldest national daily newspaper. NIMBYs are the real reason your children can't buy a house. How about this one from CNBC? A not in my backyard mentality is hampering progress on renewables, Hydro CFO says. Or this one from the Toronto Star. Want cheaper housing in Toronto? Show up at a community meeting to drown out NIMBY voices. Or here's a final one from the Daily Mail. Not in my backyard, worst celebrities NIMBYs revealed. <laughs> so even though historically there have been countless instances where NIMBY opposition movements played an essential role in protecting vulnerable environments and communities from extreme gentrification, pollution, and the negative impacts of brazen capitalist development, the phrase is now considered toxic. And therefore, it is used in political discourse, and it often leads into its presumptuous dismissal. This has resulted in situations where opposing any urban development, regardless of the social environmental damage that the project could cause, it almost always is met with ridicule and accusations of NIMBYism. Undoubtedly, the term NIMBY has become a common political mechanism used to also silence the voices of those who seek a more collaborative, democratic, and socially just approach to urban development. One has to ask, who is benefiting the most from the blanket political resignifying of NIMBYs? In these light, racist, white beachfront dwellers and affordable housing grassroots activists are categorically the same. The feature that equalizes them is their opposition to any profitable development from real estate or infrastructure building corporations, their design industry, and the politicians that serve them. And that is all that matters. <laughs>